Hey everyone, Tanner here and welcome to a little project that I've been working on for quite a while. In this video I'll show you how I made a nano riparium scape completely from scratch. Let's get started. We'll begin by building a 0.8 gallon glass aquarium, which is the whole reason that this project even exists. I have a bunch of offcuts of 1 8 inch thick glass that I needed to use for something, so I decided to build a nano aquarium with some of it. As you can see, I already pre-cut the pieces to the appropriate sizes and sanded the edges. Anyways, after doing all of that, I went and cleaned the pieces of glass with rubbing alcohol. This will clear the glass of any dirt, debris, and oil which would otherwise make a less than optimal surface for the silicone later on. With the glass all cleaned up, I went and taped the interior of the panes of glass using masking tape. The tape will allow me to make a cleaner bead of silicone in just a moment. I should also mention that this part normally isn't that difficult, but everything becomes much harder at such a small scale. From there, I got a tube of GE Silicone 1. This is 100% pure silicone with no additives. It's completely safe to use for aquariums, making it a great DIY alternative to what's typically sold as aquarium grade silicone. I prepped the silicone for use and then applied it to the outside edges of two panes of glass. These will be the interior panes or the front and back of the aquarium. After doing so, I set a tile on my work table so that I could have a flat, even surface to attach the panes of glass together. From there, I held one of the panes with silicone in place and then lightly pressed one of the other panes into the silicone. Since these pieces of glass are so small, the silicone is tacky enough to hold them together without issue. I then proceeded to attach the other pieces in the same fashion. Once all of the pieces were together, I adjusted everything to make sure it was even. Next, I ran a bead of silicone along the bottom pane of glass. Then I firmly placed the top portion of the aquarium onto the silicone bead. Afterward, the aquarium was transferred back onto the tile. A bar clamp was then lightly attached to either end of the aquarium. I'm simply using these to help hold the aquarium together while the silicone cures and while I'm working in it. As such, I went around and made sure that the aquarium was nice and square, adjusting when necessary. Now that we got the aquarium all squared up, a bead of silicone was applied to the interior seams of the aquarium. With an appropriate bead of silicone in place, I smoothed it out with my finger. Lastly, I removed all of the masking tape and allowed the silicone to cure for a solid 24 hours. Once the silicone was fully cured, the clamps could be removed. To finalize the aquarium, I used a razor scraper to remove any excess silicone or mistakes that occurred during construction. Lastly, I cleaned the glass with some rubbing alcohol and let the alcohol completely gas off. I did a test fill to confirm that the aquarium held water, and it did. I'll be the first to say that this is not a factory quality build, but it's pretty decent for a day project from scrap materials. Now that the aquarium is built, let's set it up. I'm not using much for this project, but what I have should make a pretty neat build. First off, I have a few holy stones, otherwise known as Odin stones or hag stones. These are really cool because as their name implies, they're full of holes. This will be a fairly simple scape, so I think the detail in these stones will help add interest to the overall aesthetic. Next up, I've got a dwarf horsetail. This plant is pretty unique and will be perfect for the aesthetic that I have in mind. It won't get very large and loves to grow near water, so it's also a perfect choice for a riparian type setup. To get the plant ready for use, I gently squeezed the planter so that the dirt would loosen up and the plant could be easily removed. Then I gently combed through the root structure so that the base of the plant would take up less space in the aquarium. From there, I gave the plant a quick rinse in lukewarm water to remove excess debris and loosen the root structure even further. 
Before moving forward with the build, I wanted to test the placement of everything to see how I could best fill in the space. With a better idea of how I was going to proceed, I removed these items and turned the aquarium on its side. I did this so that a white background could be attached. Normally I use a darker color, but I think white will go better with the overall aesthetic that I have in mind. Now we can scape the tank for real. For substrate, I'm using some Eco Complete. This isn't being used for any particular reason other than it's what I had lying around the house. First I added a few scoops into the aquarium. Then I moved it around with the fan brush until it was ready for the horse tail. Afterward, the horsetail went into its designated spot and the substrate was moved accordingly. Next, I added a few of the stones. The plan is to use them as a transition into the water, almost like the edge of a pond or a river bank. The placement of these was actually really easy compared to other scapes you've seen me do because they just kind of fit in place. With the two largest stones situated, I moved any excess substrate to the back and then added a few accent stones. In my mind, this design also had to incorporate some wood. I didn't have much to work with that was suitable for something this small, but I did find some scrap spider wood which is perfect for this scape. Once I got these worked into the scape, another stone was added into the background. At this point, I knew that I could work with the hardscape, so I proceeded to super glue the spider wood into place. I knew they weren't going to sink as is, and I didn't feel like going through the trouble to boil two twigs, so glue was the best option at the time. From there I added a few spoonfuls of Eco Complete and worked it into the design. The stone was then returned to the background. Let's add some substrate to the foreground. For this one, I'm using very fine gravel or really coarse sand depending on how you look at it. Anyways, it was added to the aquarium's foreground a spoonful at a time. While doing so, I moved it around the scape using my paintbrush. Eventually, there was enough sand that I could add the accent stones back to the foreground to finalize the scape. Now we can finally bring this to life with some moss. I have several types of moss here including fern moss, two types of badge moss, some hair cap moss, a bit of liverwort, sphagna moss, thread moss, and lastly java moss. Now let's get to planting. I started in the back with the sphagna moss. This will grow taller than the other mosses, so it's best suited as a background plant. A substantial patch of fern moss was then added to the right side. From there I accented with various patches of other mosses that were shown earlier. Then, the larger patch of badge moss was added to the back right. Next up I've got some subvasor tongue which is essentially a type of liverwort. The more moisture this plant gets, the better it will do. So I planted this in areas that will be completely submerged by water. I'm also using it as a way to better transition into the water area. Then I got a few sections of Anubius nana petite. Although this is typically sold as an aquatic plant, it's not a true aquatic plant and will actually grow really well out of water given enough moisture. Anyways, I planted these as transition elements as well, but they will be primarily emerged. Lastly, we've got a few segments of oak leaf creeping fig. This vining plant has really small leaves, which will add a ton of texture to the setup. If you haven't figured it out by now, the aesthetic is all about contrast created by the texture of different plants working in harmony with the hardscape. Now let's add the water. To avoid ruining the design, I'm simply spraying the tank down until it's filled up with enough water. This was actually pretty easy because the tank is so small. Lastly, we need to light this setup. 
To do so I'm simply using this little LED light from Ikea. And there you have it, my new Nano Riparium. I'm sure it could be considered many other things, but I'm going to call it a Riparium. Personally, I think that it turned out really well, and I can't wait to see it all grown in. Assuming that it does last long term, I think you'll be surprised by how it will look once the moss grows in. On that, I should mention that I'm going to have to keep this container covered while the plants acclimate to their new environment. All of these plants are either grown in really humid environments or underwater, so as is, they're really not going to appreciate the open air. What do you think about this project? Do you like how it turned out? Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if you did like it, take a moment and give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more projects like this and similar content, then consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss out on the next project. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this presentation, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.